Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday Muse Day. I'm Kalani, your host. This is World Drum Club streaming live. Welcome. see who's here. Seems like we've got some people from uh, different countries than we're than we typically have. Welcome. Welcome Roseanne, our host, hostess, host, hoster. Hoster with the moster. Uh, welcome. It looks like it says somebody from Brazil. I see some Portuguese. 
Uh, and uh, why don't you guys put your put your country down in the chat right now? We'll say hello to everybody on the live stream. Last week it was all about being hot. This week is cool. <laughs> I'm trying to be cool. Just keep in the cool mood. So I thought we'd start with a little, just kind of a little funk, funky swing. All right, I'm gonna play a little more and we will move forward. In the meantime, put your uh, country in the, in the chat. I wanna know where you guys are from. Hi, you guys. I don't know what happened to my voice. I was trying to use this, uh... Hello, hello. Welcome back. All right, we're not gonna go crazy with that this week. Hello to Rachel. Rachel Damewood, my uh, friend, longtime friend, and Tom Fox is here. Hi, Tom. A percussionist, drummer, flute, flute player, and maker. So, uh, I don't know if you caught any of my blues solo, but you'd be into that, I guess, as a flute uh, player. Uh, and many of you are playing ukulele and flutes, and that's cool. Um, and I've got an announcement today coming up in a minute. But first, I want to get right into um, our special feature, otherwise known as... Guess the Sound! Okay, today... <laughs> <laughs> so if you're new to the show, uh, yeah, this is where I play a sound and you guys guess it. As if you couldn't tell by the title. All right, so I'm going to play this thing. I think it's going to be pretty easy for you guys. I, lately, I've been picking some kind of esoteric stuff. So today, I thought I'd, I'd just go like medium. Medium difficult. This is like not even a three out of five. This is like a two out of five, I think. It's definitely not more than a three out of five. Okay, Kalani, stop talking and play the sound for crying out loud. Okay, here it is, ready? One, two, three. I know you guys got this, come on. <laughs> All right, that's it. I, you don't need more than that. It's a classic sound. What is it? Who's got it? Oh, I have to go here, hold on. All right, let's get rid of the, the shield. 
What do you guys think? I'm looking over here in the comments. I know it's a little delayed. Where's my... Let me get my phone so I can see. Uh, I'm not even logged in. Never mind. You know, I have to log into my own live stream uh, to see all the comments. Um, are we still on? Are you guys typing in the comments? Because I don't see it scrolling. Let me see. If I can scroll down over here. Oh, I can't. A little. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Somebody is. Okay, kind of weirdo. No, but good guess. Uh, and Roseanne says, yeah, she's got it. Anyone else? Okay. Daryl. Daryl Brooks. And resting. Is that resting tone? Um, both got it. Daryl, you get all the points, though, because you were in first. <laughs> Uh, and yes, it is Viber Slap. Exactly. The Viber Slap. Here it is. Popularized in 70s, like 70s music soundtracks of, of like police and F spy shows, you know, Hawaii Five-0, I think, and other stuff like that. Um, yeah, so here it is. I'll try not to blow your guys' ears out with it, but yeah, Viber Slap. And, uh, but here's the thing, you guys. I, so I have another follow-up question for you today for extra points. Extra points, like double. <laughs> double points, which is, and this is more esoteric, and you could Google it right now. What is the original instrument upon which the Viber Slap is based? And what is the name of it? So it's kind of a two-part question. Uh, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Aerosmith, that's true. Um, Aerosmith and, uh, oh, hey, Derek, what's up, man? One of my college friends is here. Invented by, invented in 1964 by LP. And check this out, you guys. That's right. Derek Zimmerman. What's your title right now, Derek? Uh, product manager for LP? Something like that. Check this out. So I got this. I bought this in a bunch of stuff I got from a, a, a studio musician here in L.A., Bought a bunch of stuff. You've probably heard me say that before. And this came with the stuff. And the thing is, it was new in the box. New in the box, you guys. Huh? Viber it's the Viber Slap 2. All right, so it's not the original. Don't get too excited. Um, yes, resting tone based on the jawbone. Yes, jawbone. All right. Okay, Derek. Oh, it's nice that you're here. Brand manager for LP. How how big of a coincidence is that? That's crazy. So yeah, let's 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 pump up LP for a second. <laughs> the LP Vibraslab 2 original box. Now I want to show you guys some. Well, first let's look at the Vibraslab a little more closely. Mm -hmm. So you see you have you have a a resonation chamber down here and inside there's some little pegs and they vibrate up and down in this it's basically like a like a wood block, right? With which is, that is played from the inside with these vibrating pegs simulating the teeth in the in the the jawbone of a donkey or some might say ass. Um, and then you trigger them with this top with this ball, right? Hit the ball. Don't hit it down here. I see some people like wanting to like slap it slap this thing this part on their leg or something. Don't do that. If you want to hit on your leg, flip it over. You can do it that way. By the way, you guys like my eggplant colored gym pants? I got them on sale from Amazon. I'm <laughs> not even kidding. I'll wear the eggplant to save 20 bucks. That's a quote. <laughs> Kalani said he'll wear an eggplant to save 20 bucks. All right, back to the jawbone and <laughs> the fiber slap. So here's the fiber slap. Yeah, invented, well, uh, invented, yeah, invented. Well, kind of like, kind of like the kabasa was invented by Martin Cohen. I mean, it's an adaptation, but yeah, he did he did come up with these designs, so that's fair. Um, yeah, so two LP. I don't know if this one's LP though. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I won't show the brand. It's a competitor. Uh, so, but what's cool is like, yeah, I have this box, and check it out. It even has. It even has like a thing you can mail in and get, what is it? I was looking at it right before the show. 
it has it has these things that identify like the parts. Um, see, it's got a little diagram. It, oh, it shows you that you can you can use a mounting bracket. Uh, new second printing of the LP catalog. You can send in five dollars to this address. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, Derek, and you better send me my catalog, man. Yeah, see, here's 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 a little diagram of. Uh, let me show you. Let me focus in on this. Uh, this is how to play it, right? He's playing it left-handed, or I don't know if that would be right-handed. I play it the other way. Yeah, so kind of cool. Came came with these little instructions. Um, so that's today's guess the sound. The, the name uh, of the, of the uh, jawbone, uh, Quijada, right? Quijada, if you want to use a Spanish uh, name. But I actually have um, Xavier, is it? I think it's Xavier, right? Xavier Cugat record. It's like a 76 or something. Is that, is that the right number? It's like the old, old records, right? Um, and it's like a Roomba record. I think they, they have like an actual Quijada on there. And I have some friends that have those. I don't have one. I don't need it. I barely need the Vibraslap these days. But, you know, it's one of those things that when you go into the music store, right? And Well, when you used to go into the music store and you there'd be that glass case, you know, and it would have like the Wiro with the red and the, and the green, the Mexican colored wooden Wiro. There'd be some claves in there. There may be a cabasa, woodblock, tambourine, really crappy pair of symbols why we don't know and there'd be like a vibra slap sitting there and it would be all like the, the kind of oddball instruments um and so that's what it is you guys but yeah what's the aerosmith song i know it's i should i should know this i was probably just listening to it i was literally just listening to aerosmith the other day but, but you know my memory is like a sieve and so i i don't remember the song is it uh you guys will type it. The Aerosmith, is it, does it, oh, oh, I can hear the song in my head. And I'm just spacing out on the name right now. Um, I'm, I'm having to go through the song to get to the chorus to try to, oh, Dream On, right? Is that it? I think it was in, is it Dream On? Nah, maybe not. Now that I think about it. All right. Let's hear the, let's hear the uh, virus lab with distortion and reverb, shall we? Just for fun. Because that maybe that's never been done in the history of music. Check it out. And now we know why. Yes, sweet emotions. Thank you, Aerosmith reference. All right, you guys, this is fun. Um, all right, and Tom got that too. See, I I know you. See, this is why this is why we have the mind hive. Uh, like Facebook or whatever. I don't know if they'd mind hive on TikTok. I think, uh, I don't go over there. I went on Instagram today for a minute because somebody sent me a link to a video. And I got to be honest with you guys, those places just scare me. It's, I get overwhelmed. <laughs> it's just, it's just like a ton of people that want attention <laughs> and that, and who are making interesting videos. I, I mean, I'm not criticizing their video making uh, skills. I'm just saying for me, I, I can't I can't handle it. So I try to avoid the TikToks and the Instagrammers. However, I do like YouTube, obviously. Um all right, good, you guys. Uh oh, is that a is that a thing? Steven Tyler broke the I did hear that. He it's a the legend has it that he broke the Viber Slap in the intro to Sweet Emotion. Yeah. Well, he probably wasn't playing it correctly. Because he didn't have the World Drum Club YouTube channel to learn how to play it. So, and if I'm wrong, Steven, uh, you know, let me know, reach out and uh, let me know. But that's the story I'm sticking with. He's, he just didn't know. Why would he know? He's not even a percussionist. <laughs> uh, there's, not that many, there's not that many opportunities in life where you could say, well, they're not even a percussionist. <laughs> We we get enough right, we get enough flack just for being drummers right we get we get all that we're the butt of all this drummer jokes so I mean I'm pushing back on that he's not even a drummer why would he know that he's just a lay person uh, no pun intended Steven Tyler you guys know what I mean 
All right. Um, let's do some music. Um, before I make the announcement, I what I wanted to do today, and I think I'm going to not use the looper right now, just get away from the metronome and stuff. Just a real quick thing, just to, to bring some awareness. Now, today is the 38th episode of Tuesday Muse Day. So I like to use the numbers, and I, I just to me, that says three, three, eight. <laughs> I think music, I'm thinking of a meter, which people don't really play in 3-8, but a lot of people play in 6-8 and 12-8 and 3-4. So I have done stuff like this in the past, but I want to review real quick for those of you who, who don't know or you, you, know, you maybe want a quick review. Let's go over some grooves that are based on threes. All right, real quick. So we have the first one that we opened with, which is like a shuffle, right, or a swing. You could call it either one. And that is the right. I gotta play softly. Right, so you have that, which is actually like a compound meter because it's kind of like a cousin to four four but with triplets, right? So it's kind of like four sets of three. Actually, those were sixes. Never mind. All right, then moving on. So you guys got that. Swing, and by the way, um, before we move totally on, you guys know Marcha, the Marcha pattern, right? Our uh, just basic Latin pattern that you can play on anything. Let me put my face over here. I'm going to turn this down a tiny bit uh, so uh, so the mic is not overwhelmed. And then, uh, but you can do this in, with a swing feel, which, you know, we used to do a lot in jazz band. Or if you go play a gig and uh, somebody plays a, a swing tune, and you're playing congas and you're not sure what to play, then you just play the swing. All right, play the swing version of that. Now, another pattern, another thing that we do uh, in, in threes, of course, is play in three, four. Not gonna spend a lot of time on this because we don't do it a lot in the, in the Latin, or you know, the Af music of the African diaspora, but, um, that's not all we're doing with congas, so sometimes you want to play in three. I mean, you can play just about anything. The, the groove would be one and two and three and one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. All right, AKA waltz feel. All right, now let's take that same pattern, but let's have more fun with it. Let's speed it up a little bit. I'm going to move my camera. Hang on. Ooh, oh, see, that's, that's why you hang chimes <laughs> where your camera's hanging. Because <laughs> then every time you move the camera, you get a musical gift. It's like a little, oh, thank you for that. Mmm, that's tasty. Um, we're going to do uh, the same kind of pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you guys do clave? Six, eight, clave. fun you guys
Try it a little faster. By the way, did you guys like the cowbell solo? I did a, a rock and roll cowbell solo in the opening. I don't know if you guys got, caught that. If you came in late, maybe you, you didn't catch it. It's like, what is he doing? He's playing a cowbell solo. fun you guys so those are our three uh three kind of main fields now uh resting tone is saying um something is obscuring my view let me see play a young kitty play a young kitty rhythm so yeah young kitty would fall into the the category of the first rhythm um although they in west africa they would not use the use the word shuffle <laughs> probably uh they probably wouldn't say play a shuffle beat uh but it does have that same feel uh all right so yeah so the, the shuffle beat, even though, and guess where it probably came from? Yeah, it's, it appears in, um, it appears in what the music from, at least from West Africa. I don't know about all of Africa, but uh, music of the African diaspora that we have uh, here in the U.S. now, and also through the, the, the Caribbean and South America, you will run into that feel as well. So it's not just a more modern thing. Um, However, music did travel back and forth across the Atlantic um, quite a bit. And so, you know, in some ways, the, the Spanish music, which was more uh, orchestral in nature, blended with the West African music and the indigenous instruments, uh, like the scrapers and shakers and things. Um, all, it's all blend, it all blended together. And because people were traveling back and forth, you know, things did travel also from Europe directly down to uh, Af the African continent via this, uh, of course, Spanish, French, Dutch, all, all those, all the invaders. <laughs> I'm not mincing words. Yeah, col colonization. Isn't it great for music? <laughs> oh my God. No, don't, I didn't say that. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but there is a, you know, silver lining, I guess, um, which is, which is we have a very rich musical I'm trying to pull myself out of this hole. I just started digging for myself. Uh, we have a rich cultural heritage here in the Americas and, and all over the world. Um, I'm not going to say thanks to, but uh, as a result of uh, blending cultures, music, arts, travel, all that stuff. So, um, oh, okay. And we have other guests here. Well, I didn't say out of Cornelius. Hello. And uh, Anna. As far as I get with your name now, right? <laughs> I think you said that was okay. Uh, so hi, you guys. And let me, let me scroll up for a second um, because I, I know I didn't say hello to everyone. Rebecca, that's right. I know I missed somebody. All right, you guys. Um, so uh, I do have some videos on all those rhythms. And of course, you can go online. Lots of people talk about these different kind of uh, rhythms in three. And then a few weeks ago, I mentioned nine, eight. The first tune on my first album called Marumba. Uh, well, the album's called Pangea. The tune is called Marumba. And I did a 9 8, which I, I love that. It's like a, um, it's kind of a, well, it's a, it, no, it's not a, is it a 9 8? It's like a 3 4, but, but with clave. I guess it's a 3 4. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. 
So you can do a three four like a three four version of of the Roomba Wall One Co. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, so I encourage you to to explore the number three uh, in music. Uh, whether that's let's review shuffle. All right, uh, three four, which I just did a different variation of um, six eight. And you could do nine eight. Two three one two three eight. Ding 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 ding. It's twelve eight and Cornelius. I know and seven eight. That would be what one of each, right? A, a four four and a three or a three, a two four and a three eight or whatever. Uh, so yeah. Um, all right, you guys. So here's the news. All right, I'm I'm excited about this. And I hope you guys are too. Let me bring up my talking mic a little. Brand new, straight off the, uh, straight out of my keyboard today. But I've been working on this for a few weeks. I mentioned it a few weeks ago, and um, and I just posted this. So check it out. Check this out, you guys. Summer Rhythm Fest is on. And I'll tell you what it is, but look at the names up there. I'm so happy to have Taylor from Holy Goat Percussion Tandem and in Chicago, Carolyn Brandy, amazing musician, uh, leader, teacher, facilitator, uh, just a mentor to so many, and guest of World Drum Club. Michael Plesnick, who's killing it over in Thailand, doing uh, djembe and conga stuff. He has a lot of videos and also his own website. Um, uh, our friend Dave Kobinski, um, who I had on in a percussion hang, right? Dave Kobinski, who who has a few books out. I think what is it called? Drawing on uh, Drawing on Culture. Uh, I might forget. I might mess up some of the titles, but you can look it up. And then uh, some other guy. I don't know who that is at the bottom. Um, so what is that? That is a. It's an event that we're gonna do. That we're it's coming up. So here's the thing, you guys. I put a link. It it hopefully is down in the in the info. If it's not, you can go to patreon.com. I just posted a thing there. But don't register too fast because uh, I'm giving there's a there's coupon codes, there's discount codes for all patrons of the channel, and there's special a special discount for people at the courses and private lesson tier. Okay, so if, if that's you, don't rush over and register without the code. I'm going to give you guys the code. Actually, I already posted the code for all patrons. Um, and basically, you guys, of course, I want you to become patrons, right? So if you're not a patron, this is my way of like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm twisting your arm a little, right? But I, I, I can do that. But here's the thing. If, if, you, um, if you join even for a month, and you just join at the base level, then it pays for the it pays for that month. The discount pays for the month. So it's basically just like getting a month for free. You know why not? Um, and then if you want to bail after that month, it's fine. Do do what you got to do. But uh, but I but there is a substantial discount for people at the uh, courses tier because those are my business class and first class passengers. So that's the way it goes. Uh, you got to pay to play, you guys. <laughs> But I'm excited, and so this is an online event. It will be, it'll be, it's semi-recorded. There'll be a lot of. It's going to take place over a weekend, but I will. There will be like repeated sessions that you you can join. You don't have to go to every single session. I've got multiple sessions, and you're thinking, well, why don't you just put it online, and why don't you just make it downloadable, and blah 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 blah. And that's a very simple reason. It's called paywall. <laughs> It's called unique opportunity, uh, and no, I'm not putting it like it's like why don't we just put everything on streaming and then nobody gets paid? All right, reference to current strike that I'm in great support of, as I just mentioned on my Facebook today. I will not be accepting any offers to um, to replace any of the top male actors in Hollywood. Um. Okay, so you guys, you can look that up. I don't want to go on and on. Um, 
But uh, we've got, so let me, let me just tell you what you might be wondering, which is well, well, what are they gonna do? What are we gonna do in the Rhythm Fest? So the Rhythm Fest is about rhythms and everybody is contributing like at least two main rhythmic lessons. A lot of them, much to my surprise, I thought I was gonna be like, okay, here's a rhythm on conga and here's another rhythm on conga, here's two conga rhythms. But these guys are like, th all of them are, are producing like these huge lessons <laughs> with like djembe ensemble arrangements. And I mean, um, I think Carolyn's has a song with it and it's just pretty cool. So it's it's not just like you learn like two rhythms for conga from this teacher and two rhythms on djembe from that teacher. It's like dun dun parts and bells and it's all ensemble. Like Dave's playing the flute and he's they give you background. So it's just, uh, you know, it's extra content that's not here on YouTube. It's not even on the Patreon. It's not going to be up there. It's separate. Um, so Rhythm Fest. So um, my plan is this is our first one. Come hang out. I tried to make it super affordable. I think it is. Uh, but you can check it out. There's a link below. It's on Eventbrite. And if you can't find that, go to patreon.com slash Kalani. I just posted about it. Except that I think you're going to need to be a patron to read the post. <laughs> okay. So enough on that. Let's get into our gimme fiving today. Um... And for those of you who are new, and Roseanne will repeat this, but it's pretty easy. You guys choose five instruments for me to loop, all right? And then I loop them. And you can basically choose from anything that is apparently available in the in my you know environment here. So obviously congas, bongos, cajon, whatever I've got over here on the table, cow, giant cowbell. Uh, there's blocks, shakers, you know, all the typical kind of percussion. Now, we do, we have a special instrument today called the quijada or the vibra slap. If you pick that one, um, I may or may not play it. <laughs> I, I'll play it, but I might break it. Like Steve Taylor. Steve Tyler? Steven Tyler. Um, and then ukulele, there's some native flutes over here. You guys know what I have. Uh, the, us the usuals know what I have, all right? And so let's just get into that. And then in the meantime, I'm here to answer any questions or comments. I do want to say thanks for, uh, and welcome to Tom Fox, who's, Tom, Tom uh, and I, we did, we did a lesson and we've been communicating via email and text. And Derek, I don't know if you're still hanging out, but it's great to see you hanging out, man. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, Derek and I went to school together in 83 Oh my God, that's four. Oh my God, is that 40 years? Derek, what's happening, man? 83, 84, 85, somewhere in there, right? And um, both students of Jerry Steinholtz, by the way. So shout out to Jerry. And I just had a beer with Troy King last night. Another CSUN percussion graduate. So um, yeah. We're, we're, we've, we've gone our own ways and now we're all coming back together to annoy one another again, as we did 40 years ago and have fun and play music. Um, so you guys can pick five things yourself. Uh, okay, uh, Lacey's asking, didn't the Flintstones play coconut shells? I think they, well, they played all kinds of stuff, right? Weren't they playing like, it's kind of gruesome if you think about it. Didn't they have an instrument that was just like bones? Or they were playing a, like, it was like a skeleton, right? And they were playing bones. I don't know. They had a lot of uh, creative things. Um, so yeah, pick five things yourself. I mean, you can you could throw out like one thing, but um, now, is it Benny is suggesting Tonbach. Uh, I don't play Ton, I don't own a Tonbach, um, but I have friends that do. Um, and I, you know, I could have bought a tone. I don't know why this, I'm just remembering my, a tone box experience. I saw a tone box on eBay and somebody had listed it as a large single bongo and it was 50 bucks. I probably should have bought it just because I know, you know, to get a tone, if even if it needed a new head, if it was a legit tone box for 50 bucks, somebody obviously didn't know what they had and they listed, of course they listed. Of course they called it a large single bongo, because if you don't know, if you're not a percussionist, 
<laughs> That's my theme today. Well, they're not a percussionist. Give them a break. Um, if you're not a percussionist or drummer, why would you why would you know? I mean, people don't even know the difference between congas and bongos. All right. So we know that everything's a bongo. But yeah, I saw Tonebog for 50 bucks. I just I don't really play it. And that is it's like tabla. I bought some tabla once. <laughs> Interesting tone says tabla. Right when I say that. I bought I owned some tabla for a while. I took a couple of tabla lessons and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna go on this ride. <laughs> I can't, I don't have the kind of time for that. You know, I'm not going to do it. I, I wouldn't do it justice. Uh, and I, I have too many other things going on because tabla is a, that is a lifestyle. It's an investment. It's a very serious instrument. So I knew, I knew I wasn't going to, um, I knew I wasn't going to do it. So I sold them to somebody from Cal Arts. He's a student up there. He was excited to get them. I was, I was happy to, to find a good home for him. So yeah, that's the other side of getting into percussion and collecting a lot of instruments is that sometimes you just have to say, well, okay, I'm, I need to find a better home for this instrument than, than the one I'm providing it, which is just a lonely, isolated, nothing life in a drum case. Uh, and that's not, that's not good. Um, all right. And yeah, Benny said, is it, is it Benny? I'm, I hope I'm saying your name right. Didn't know what it was. $50 is a bargain, even for a conga. Yes, that's true. Even for bongos, uh, probably. Really, any drum. Um, so, okay. Well, we've got a few. Um, give me five suggestions. Now, Roseanne, you know, usually holds the keys to that. Now, Roseanne, I will, I will just say that if you wanted to pick somebody else, to pick the Gimme Five, you could do that. You're, you are Speaker of the House, so to speak. You have the gavel, <laughs> so uh, it's up to you. I'm just, I'm just throwing out uh, different options. But yes, last call, you guys. By the way, I want you guys to look up a dude named Tata Guinness. Tata Guinness. T A T A G U I. NES? Is that right? Weenus? Yeah, I think so. And I don't know if, if anybody's posted all of his videos. Our, our teacher, Derek and my teacher, Jerry Steinholz, used to give us these videos all the time. And, uh, and we would, these would circulate and they would get copied multiple times, you know. But Tata Weenus, he would, he would do these conga solos that were insane. He's a Cuban conguero. And these videos got, they were, they were recorded like off Cuban television or something. And he would do these solo conga, you know, he'd, he'd be doing concerts, but what we saw was like these conga solos. And, um, and I just remember him cause he, uh, they always use this kind of cheesy spring reverb. I mean, it was a reverb, but it, it sounded like it was going through an amplifier. You guys know that spring reverb sound where you, you, so you like if you, if you knock the amp, it goes like, doing, doing, doing. <laughs> it makes this weird sound. So I was just remembering that, like, like it would sound like, whatever. I'm not doing a Tata Witness impersonation right now, but I want you guys to look it up because it's amazing. He, he's an amazing player. And he had some super scary fingernails. He's like Dracula looking hands. Super scary, but he would use his fingernails on the congas. And he had this bit where he would do, he would start doing this typing thing. He would start, he would go on his, with his fingernails and he would, and then he would start doing like, like he was typing something and hitting the carriage. Now, I think a lot of us are old enough to, to know exactly what that reference is talking about, because we use typewriters. Some of you whippersnappers, maybe not. All right, do we have, okay, we do have a gimme five. Uh, djembe, conga, flute, frog, ukulele. I can do that. Let's get the frog ready. Um, and so, yeah, djembe, conga, flute, frog, ukulele. Let's get a, I'm going to grab a couple things, you guys. I have to, I have to get um, a djembe up here. So while I'm doing that. Uh, 
talk amongst yourself. Let's see. I'm feeling uh, like I, I need to do something a little bit faster. So let me see. Let's see. And let's pick a different groove. Um, let me check. I, I've got it so you guys can hear the hear the uh, tracks that I hear. So let me let me check this. That's kind of fun. Let's use that. All right, um, how are we doing on time? Do you guys love the frog? We all love the frog. Oh, we're perfect. We got 10 minutes, 10 minutos. Um, all right, well, thanks again, you guys, for hanging out. Um, we'll do, I'll do a little bit of looping and we'll see what we get. And then um, I'll come back and say goodbye before we sign off today. But thanks for the newbies and the newcomers for dropping in. I hope you've uh, hope you learned something and enjoyed yourself. That's the goal. Uh, and to all the regular offenders, the usual suspects, yeah, thank you guys too for dropping in. And yeah, go go check out the Rhythm Fest thing. I'm excited. I'm super excited actually. Super excited. All right, let's erase what we have so far. And I have to do a couple settings, and then we are ready to go. Let's see.
dropping in and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for the suggestion uh, shout out to our gimme five contributors say goodbye to mr. frog until next time bye bye thanks for dropping in everybody I really appreciate you being here I'm gonna go hop around now. next week. Stay groovy. Stay cool. All right. Drum Club.